I'm in Trinidad and I'm having a slight pain. Go to the doctor. The doctor says, Sherry, you're pregnant. But because of the pain, we're going to have to send you to the hospital to do an ultrasound. So I go to the hospital. They do another pregnancy test. They confirm, yes, you're pregnant. So I'm thinking, okay, you know, whatever. Go and do this ultrasound. The result comes back, no gestational sac. What does that mean? It means that there's no baby because there's no gestational sac. So I think, oh, okay. While at the hospital, I start getting these awful pains. And so they keep me and the doctor orders a beta test. Go and I do the beta test. Two days later, you have to do another one so that you can compare the findings. And the findings show that the test has gone up almost 20,000 points. Now, if, I was, if there was no gestational sac, the points should have been going down, but they went up drastically, which means that clearly something is there, doctors. So they send me for another ultrasound. Take the ultrasound the second time, and all of a sudden, the ultrasound comes back. There are two babies. What? So I'm confused, they're confused. The doctor is saying to me, listen, there are two babies, yes, but they're in the fallopian tube and it's not where they're supposed to be. Your life is at risk at this point. So I'm thinking, okay. He says to me, your treatment is gonna be determined by whether or not these two babies are alive or dead. If they're alive, then we have to do surgery. If they're dead, then we just give you an injection. So he calls the person who did the ultrasound, says to them, was there cardiac activity? She says, no, there wasn't cardiac activity. So the doctor is like, okay, we're going to uh, get you into the hospital right now. And we're going to you know, give you the injection. I'm telling you, everything in me, the Holy Spirit is just screaming, don't stay, don't stay, don't stay, get a second opinion. So I say that to them. I said, you know, I think I want to get a second opinion. Um, you know, this is the public hospital. I want to go to the private hospital. So they said, okay, no problem. You can go and do that. They give me another requisition. I go to the private hospital. Now, the ultrasound machine at the, at the public hospital, it's old. <laughs> it's horrible. The, the ultrasound machine at the private hospital, oh, it's perfect. It's pristine. It's brand new. And the ultrasound lady, she's doing the test. She's doing it. And she keeps saying, the baby, the baby, the baby. When she's finally winding down, and I think, okay, all she has ever said was the baby, I comment and I said, you know, it's a good thing I got a second opinion because the other lady said that there were two. She says, oh, she said there was two and continues looking. And then says, oh, she was right. There is two. Are you joking me right now? Anyhow, because I know that my treatment is going to be determined by the, either the babies being alive or dead, I ask her, is there cardiac activity? I remember the other lady said that there were two, which she was right on, but she said that they were dead. This lady turns the screen to me and says, look, I can see them moving, both of them. And then she turns up the audio. I hear them both. At this point in time, I'm thinking, you know what? First they said there was no baby, then they said there was two. Then they said they're dead, now they're alive. I think God is gonna do something very unique in this situation. Why? The thing with an ectopic pregnancy is this. If you are pregnant in the tube, the tube will grow, 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 expand past its normal size and then it will rupture. When it ruptures, not only will the babies die, you have five minutes to live. But because everybody kept saying, first death, then life, they kept giving me different, different uh, opinions, I determined, you know what, Lord? Every time they said death, you said life, I believe you're gonna do something special, and so I'm not doing surgery. If you want me to do surgery, Lord, give me a sign. Well, he finally did. My mother called me and she had had a dream two weeks prior to me even knowing that I was pregnant. She had a dream that she, had, she saw two babies, one adult. The adult looked dead. The two babies were dead. She went and she shook the adult and the adult woke up, but they were very weak. But the babies were dead. Well, I took that as my sign. I thanked the Lord. 
I was very saddened because I was really hoping that the Lord would save the babies. And I got on a plane the next morning and came to Canada. Just imagine it, walking into the hospital. Hi, yeah, I just came from Trinidad. Um, I have a twin ectopic pregnancy. Nobody believed me. In fact, one of the hospitals had me sitting there for probably about four or five hours in the waiting room. I fell asleep. To cut a long story short, they told me that uh, if in case I felt any kind of pain, to call them. But if not, they would have the surgery in the afternoon. Well, all the pain that I had been feeling completely stopped. All went away. Four o'clock in the afternoon, when I finally went into surgery, they told me this after the fact. As soon as they cut into me, they got the cameras in, my tube ruptured. But they were already there. And so they were able to take away the tube. Of course, the babies didn't survive. They never had a chance. But they saved my life. And I realized something in that moment. God had orchestrated this entire experience to show me what his sacrifice is for me. Let me break it down real quick. While we were yet sinners, the Bible says, Christ died. And so while we were in the midst of dying eternally in our sin, God already had a solution in mind, Christ, and he died in our place. When my tubes ruptured, the doctors were there in time just to save me. And it's exactly what God did to save all of us. He's perfect. His love is perfect. And he loves us all. And he wants to spend the rest of eternity with us. He rescued me. He wants to rescue you. I'm Sherry Augustus. And I've been rescued. Hey, what's up? You're watching We The Rescued. Today is the fifth installment of our week-long video devotional and prayer series. Thank you for being a part of this. Thank you for watching. Today's topic for prayer is those who have fallen away. You may or may not know someone who has fallen away from the church, who was raised in church, who was raised knowing God, or who came to the faith uh, but has since departed. And so today we want to take time to pray that those people might be taken care of by God, that he would watch over their lives and that he would guide them back to the light, guide them back to the truth. Um, there are a lot of things that happen in this world and it can be hard to hold on to faith. We want to sympathize with those people, not judge them, but understand that we all face similar kinds of things. So take some time to pray for those who have struggled with their faith, who have reached the conclusion that they don't want to be a part of it, or who are just struggling and, and trying to find the answers to those questions. Pray that God would reveal himself to them. Thank you for being part of this series. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. There'll be plenty more coming your way soon. And uh, stay tuned for the rest of this week.